Um, is there a time when dance is allowed during the Mass, and also how about secular music? Ah, you said three questions. So, <laughs> the I, can first... I can sit down any time. I just thought uh, I got to No, no. <laughs> the... Dance is not known in the Latin rite of the Mass. Our congregation has considered it for years. There is no major document of the church on that. But the directive we give from our congregation is this. In the strict liturgy, that means the mass, the sacraments, Europe and America should not talk of liturgical dance at all. Because dance, as known in Europe and North America, does not, is not part of worship. So they should forget it and not talk about it at all. But it is different in Africa and Asia. Not a concession to them, but because their culture is different. If you give a typical African the gift to bring at offertory, and you give a typical European the same gift to bring, if they don't see one another, the European will be rather stiff in walking to the altar. The African is likely to have movement right, left. It is not a dance. It is a graceful movement to show joy and offering. Also in Asia, they have refined movements showing respect, adoration, joy, in Africa, all the cultures are not the same. If you are in Ashanti in Ghana, they have some refined movements. The bishops of each country have to watch this, knowing that the aim, the reason for mass, the reasons are for adoration, contrition, thanksgiving, and asking for what we need. If the movements help towards that, yes. If they do not, no. Now, if you say dance in Europe and in North America, people think of Saturday evening, ballroom dance, one man, one woman. And it is all right as recreation, but we do not come to Mass to enjoy. We don't come to Mass to admire people and clap for them and say, repeat, repeat, wonderful, excellent. That is all right for the auditorium, for the theater, even for the parish hall. Presuming that the dance is acceptable from moral point of view, because there are some dances that are wrong everywhere. <laughs> even in the parish hall and in the theater, they are wrong because they are provocative unnecessarily. So, and also in Africa and Asia, every dance is not acceptable. There are some dances that are totally not acceptable in any religious event. So it, it differs. But as for North America or Europe, we think that the dance should not enter the liturgy at all. And the people discussing liturgical dance should spend that time saying the rosary. <laughs> uh, or they should spend that time reading one of the documents of the Pope on the Holy Eucharist. We have already enough, we have already enough problems. Why banalize more? Why desacralize more? Haven't we already enough confusion? Amen. If you want to admire a dance, you know where to go, but not mass. And then the, the not other you, of course. It's other people. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the secular music, you know, not. Ah, yes. Obviously, every music has its own setting. We come to mass for again those four reasons I mentioned. Does that music mean? adoration of God or praise of God 
or asking pardon for our sins and the reparation or begging God for what we need. Recreation is very different. Okay. The, you know, the maestro who gesticulates and makes funny movements, most of them unnecessary, and then he finishes, he makes a, big, a deep bow, and there's a standing ovation. That's good for theater, but not for mass. Young people's rock music, they enjoy, enjoy, is good for picnic, <laughs> but not for mass. Everything has its proper place. Therefore, the bishops of each area should get a good music commission so that they have music book containing Catholic hymns so that only Catholic hymns are sung because what we sing should manifest what we believe and should nourish our faith and not just sing anything. It should be theologically deep, liturgically rooted and musically acceptable. Unfortunately, many things sung in some Catholic churches should not figure at all inside the church. Okay, and last but not least, I'm going to sit down. How do you respond to a, a priest who tells you uh, things are not any worse today in the time of, than they were in the time of St. Augustine or when the, the popes were corrupt? And it was just a, a response to a comment I had made about relativism and that I was worried about the damage it was doing to our teens today. I will ask him, Father, I want to know what you are saying. Are you listening? Are you backing out? <laughs> I thought you were listening for the response. Um, I, I would say to the priest, are you saying that telling lies was bad at the time of St. Augustine? And you don't see why we shouldn't tell lies today. People stealing other people's husbands or wives was bad at the time of St. Augustine. So it is not any worse today. People not going to mass at that time was bad. And therefore it shouldn't be any worse today. What is he talking about? So we should say to him, Jesus said, you are to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. So... The, the gospel preached without discount. We don't comfort ourselves to say, there were thieves before in the Middle Ages, so do not worry about thieves today. It's not a good argument. 